Hey everybody, it's Charlie. So a lot of people were asking me more about warging in the Starks. So I thought I'd do a little bit of an explainer about what warging is, how it's different from green sight. I don't want to talk too much about green sight yet, just because we're going to see a lot of that with Bran in season six. So it could get a little spoilery, but I do think we'll see some other Starks warging before the end of the series. So what I'm going to do is talk a little bit about things that George R. R. Martin has said about the Stark children publicly. So I don't really consider them spoilery, but I will say general spoiler warning for everything that's happened on the show so far. And new round of the giveaway starts now too, so all you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave a comment on this video. Leave all your Wolf Dream comments. So here we go. A couple years ago, George R. R. Martin was asked about the Stark children and Wolf Dreams. Now when we say Wolf Dreams, we're talking about Stark children in the books that have previously dreamt that they lived as wolves, you're just running around hunting things. The thing is though, is that most of this is experienced through Bran's character, and we already know he's a warg and a green seer to boot, so that's not really a revelation. But because all the Stark children at one point had been bonded to their dire wolves, someone asked George R. R. Martin if they all had wolf dreams, all the Stark children, and he said yes, they did. But just to clarify, the only Starks that have wolf dreams are the Starks with dire wolves that are still alive. So Sansa, for instance, probably doesn't have wolf dreams because Lady is dead. On top of that, Rob also not going to have any wolf dreams because he himself is totally dead, along with Grey Wind. But just knocking Brain off the list, there's Jon Snow with Ghost. Obviously, Jon Snow is kind of hanging in the lurch right now. There's Arya with Nymeria. And then there's Rickon and Shaggy Dog. So as of right now, not including Bran because, because he's a total green seer, all the Starks are probably having wolf dreams without realizing it. And when I say not realizing it, they probably don't understand exactly what's going on. Like they don't know about warging. Bran and Jon Snow are the only two that have gotten explainers about how warging and skin changing works. And, and just to be clear, Technically, it's called skin changing. Warging is just when you skin change with a dog or a wolf. In the hierarchy of skin changing, th those are like the bottom of the barrel. They're the easiest. Most people who are skin changers never get above that level. Vermeer Sixkins was one of the few that we've seen so far that was really good at it. And even he wasn't able to skin change into something more difficult than a bird. Dogs and wolves are the easiest. Birds are a little bit harder. And people are nearly impossible. Bran is the first recorded instance in the books, anywhere in the books, of anyone that's skin changed into another human. But all the Stark children being wargs, that's actually a pretty big deal. That's pretty cool. Does that mean we're going to see them all warging into their direwolves at some point? Probably not. Sansa, for instance. Even though Lady is dead and she's not having wolf dreams, that doesn't make her not a warg. That doesn't take away her warging ability. But turning into a skin changer doesn't really seem like it's where her character is headed. I'd really like to see her take back control of Winterfell and, and live a more traditional life, just rule the North. But what about Jon Snow? If he's coming back, why wouldn't he go back and take control of Winterfell? He has had something of a leadership arc, learning to be an effective leader of people who hate you. But he's more of a military leader. And Winterfell, even though it's his home, doesn't really feel like his home. He, he's one of those bastard children that doesn't feel like they have a true home. If there's anything that Catelyn Stark should regret, it's the way she treated Jon Snow growing up. She totally drank the Kool-Aid and thought that Ned cheated on her and took it as an affront and kept Jon Snow at arm's length. So I think if any Stark feels like Winterfell is their home, that they belong there, it would be Sansa, not Jon Snow, or, or even Arya for that matter. She doesn't want to be a lady. But I do think there's a high likelihood we could see Jon Snow and Arya warg at some point, not in the powerful way that Bran does it, ju just on a very low level. Just forget about the fact that Jon Snow's body is lying cold in the snow, up to this point, his relationship with Ghost is a lot like Daenerys' relationship with her dragons. And if you're wondering, no, dragon bonding and skin changing are two completely different things. Now, I've already mentioned Nymeria and the Direwolf Super Pack, so you guys can let me know. Do you think when Arya gets around to coming back to Westeros, she will warg into Nymeria and control the Super Pack? That might sound a little ridiculous, but she's not going to stop having wolf dreams, so she still has a deep connection to Nymeria anyway. So even if she doesn't do something really crazy, she'll still be connected to Nymeria in the same way that Daenerys is connected to her dragons. Like Daenerys can control her dragons to a certain extent. I'm sure Arya could do the same thing with Nymeria. It's just that Arya is on this faceless men ninja arc where she's learning to use all these different tools, learning to use her body. So it stands to reason that she would learn to use the other skills that she already has. It's just that she doesn't understand that she has that ability right now. She knows she has wolf dreams, but she doesn't understand skin changing. And yes, I've totally seen the spoilery pictures from, from the set from Game of Thrones. Arya's been filming a ton of Faceless Men scenes. If you've read the Mercy chapter from Winds of Winter, the chapter that George R. R. Martin posted, they'll probably end up doing that. 
For those that are wondering how the Starks became wargs in the first place, like it's something that's passed down genetically. So anyone that is born of Stark blood will at least have a limited ability to warg. Obviously, Bran is a special case in that he was born a green seer too. Most historical events associated with skin changers go back to the First Men. So at some point, they developed that ability, and the Starks, obviously the Kings of Winter, descended from the First Men, so they just got it that way. It's like trying to figure out how the ancient Valerians developed dragon bonding. Little bit of blood magic, little bit of genetic tampering over a very long period of time. But if you're looking to debunk any crazy theories, I think the fact that Daenerys is not a war doesn't have any warg abilities is good evidence that she is not the daughter of Lyanna Stark. A lot of people just ask me about the, the Rhaegar Targaryen Lyanna Stark Daenerys theory. Like in instead of Jon Snow being their son, is Daenerys their daughter? So no, anyone born of that union would have limited warging ability, which Jon Snow does have. But you guys can let me know, do you want to see the other Stark children, like do you want to see Rickon whenever he comes back, do you want to see him warg into Shaggy Dog? It seems like he might be coming back in season 6 in a small way, I, I don't know how big a storyline they would give him, but Osha was seen on set, the actress that plays Osha, so if she's coming back, that probably means that Rickon's coming back too. Just speaking of the TV show, one of the reasons I think we haven't seen a lot of other warging outside of Bran's storyline is because they want more visual diversity with the arcs that they give to the characters. But even if they don't show it on screen, all the Stark children are skin changers. It's just that only one of them is a good skin changer. So what's going to happen next? Because Walking Dead is on break this week, I'm going to post my Game of Thrones Q&A tomorrow just like normal. And for my next bonus video, just leave any requests that you guys want, anything you guys want me to talk about. There's been a lot of Star Wars stuff going on. They just released a new Star Wars book that's part of the expanded canon, part of the new movie canon. It's called Star Wars Aftermath. So even if you don't like to read, check out the audiobook. It's a lot of fun. It's pretty good so far. It's all about what happens to the Empire after the Battle of Endor. In a couple weeks, they're actually releasing the new Duncan Egg book. Well, it's really just like the collected edition of the old Duncan Egg stories, but I'll be giving away a couple copies, so look out for that. So just in case you guys haven't seen, there's a bunch of trailers for TV shows that are coming back real soon. If you haven't seen any of them, you can click here. There's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Arrow Season 4, a bunch of other stuff, Doctor Who's coming back. And you can click here to learn all about Clegane Bull and the Gravedigger Theory and why everyone thinks that the Hound might be coming back. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Let's high five. I'll see you guys tomorrow.